Wool is used to make all things comfy and cozy. From ugly Christmas sweaters, to scarves, hats, socks, blankets, jackets, and even carpets. And if you have a closet or a dresser, there's probably wool in it. But what most people don't know is that wool comes from an incredibly cruel industry. And I want to share with you today what the wool industry doesn't want you to know. The first thing is that almost all lambs raised for wool production endure painful mutilation, or procedures as the industry calls it, including tail docking, which is having their tails removed, usually by cutting them off with a blade or knife, their ears hole punched, and males are castrated between two and eight weeks of age. The most common method is by attaching a rubber ring to their testicles, which goes on really, really tight and is left there for a few weeks until circulation is lost completely. And that'll drop off in the next 10 days or so. As you can imagine, this is really painful. Um, all the mutilating procedures are painful and almost always done without any painkillers. So the wool industry justifies docking the tails of lambs and sheep to prevent fecal matter from building up on the tails. And in many cases, the tail gets cut off too short, which can lead to rectal prolapses where the tail muscles weaken and cause the insides to come outside. And you know, a humane alternative to just chopping off their tails would be to maintain proper care and hygiene of the sheep. But since they're usually raised by the thousands for wool production, in order to give them adequate sanitation and care and trimmings around the hindquarters, that would just cut a massive chunk into profits. And the wool industry is a profit-driven industry. It's not a bunch of happy farmers with happy sheep and lambs and goats. It's a lot of the time miserable animals and miserable angry workers. But before I talk about that, let's talk about the genetic manipulation that has even made profit-driven wool production possible. Naturally, sheep in the wild grow just the right amount of wool to protect themselves from cold temperatures in the winter, and when it warms up in the summer, their winter coat sheds, naturally, just like a lot of other furry, woolly, fuzzy mammals. But sheep raised for wool production, like the Moreno breed, have not only been selectively bred to produce as much wool as possible, but so that their wool no longer sheds, but just keeps growing and growing and growing. That doesn't only cause discomfort for the animals, but thousands of sheep in the industry actually die of heat exhaustion from all their excess wool during hot summer months. And the selective breeding that has made them grow so much wool has resulted in excess wrinkled folded skin, which can accumulate moisture and bacteria over time. So in a profit preserving attempt to stop wool from growing around the hindquarters and thus stop feces from accumulating around the hindquarters, what is still practiced on sheep is a painful bloody procedure called mulesing. So what mulesing is, is literally cutting off strips and chunks of flesh from around the butt and legs of the lambs or sheep. Because it's a lot more affordable to just slice off that flesh and not have a bunch of wool and folds and wrinkles covered in crap than it is to properly clean and care for your animals. So they're restrained and they literally have pieces of their ass cut off. And the irony of this disgusting procedure is that while it's designed to protect them from dying from flies and maggots all over their dirty butts, mulesing actually can cause severe infections, tetanus, and blood loss that leads to premature death. Mulesing also increases the risk of cancerous growths, including vulva cancer in female sheep. You see, a humane solution to preventing fly strike and maggots and poo would be to just clean the animals, care for them properly, ensure adequate hygiene, but cleaning the behinds of millions of animals at a time, it's just not gonna happen in this industry, which is why the sheep are just being mutilated instead. You see, all throughout animal agriculture, when you're raising millions of animals at a time to produce something to make money, those animals are gonna get treated like property. They're gonna get treated like objects and eventually discarded like objects. 
And wool shearing employees are often not paid by the hour, but by volume, how much wool they can obtain per sheep or in a short period of time. So as you can guess, when they're dealing with dozens and dozens of sheep per shift, a lot of them handled the sheep really roughly and quickly, leading to cuts, scrapes, open wounds, and even partial dismembering of ears, nipples, genitals, and other sensitive body parts. Undercover investigations have shown time and time again that when they get sliced open or have a gashed open wound, they're just held down and stitched on the spot with a thread and needle and left to heal or die without any painkillers. And it's crazy that they're treating them this way, but I mean, what do you expect? Dealing with thousands of sheep per year? You hate your job, you're just trying to make a living? I mean, the industry does not value these animals as the sensitive creatures they are. They're treated like property because the fleece that grows off of their body is there to be turned into wool and make a lot of people at the top a lot of money. And you see, sheep are prey animals, so they're terrified of being pinned down. But that's the quickest way for these employees to shear dozens and dozens of sheep per day. Undercover investigations have also shown that kicking, stomping, hitting, punching, and stepping on sheep are common in shearing warehouses. Former employees have reported seeing sheep with horrible injuries and broken legs, and we even have lots of evidence of this on video now from investigators who filmed what goes on inside shearing warehouses. Another cause of death from shearing is that wool-farmed sheep are generally sheared in the spring before they would naturally shed their winter coats. And because temperatures are still often cold, thousands of sheep die every year from exposure to cold temperatures from premature shearing. So what happens when their ride through hell is over? Well, almost over. When their wool production declines or they get a few years old, they're almost always shipped off to slaughter, to be killed, to have their throats cut. And the wool industry in particular likes to export thousands of sheep to other countries. So sometimes they fly by plane, truck, or ship. Some exporting ships have 20,000 plus sheep on them at a time, and reports have shown that a lot of sheep die during transport, either from starvation, dehydration, injury, and sheep that happen to be pregnant who give birth during transport, their baby lambs almost never survive. I mean, if they did, they would just be discarded at the slaughterhouse anyways, but the countries that these wool farmed sheep often get shipped to, some of them have next to no slaughter regulations at all. So a lot of them end up getting dismembered while fully conscious and just go through some really horrible, horrible experiences. Not that any way of being slaughtered is a nice experience, but wool farmed sheep in particular have it really, really bad. And what makes this even more devastating is that sheep are intelligent, social, curious, playful, amazing animals. <laughs> Sheep actually form lasting, affectionate bonds with other sheep and sometimes people. <laughs> Jack's a very affectionate man and he loves to have the top of his head scratched between his ears and I find that it makes him go to sleep eventually. These animals do not deserve this. They don't deserve to go through this hell. And even when you see the label saying sustainable wool, those words don't really mean much. Sustainable can just mean that we use less water and we let our sheep roam outside. And I mean, you can label it any way you want, but exploiting and mutilating and terrifying and pinning down and injuring and then killing sheep is 
not okay. It's just not. If we wouldn't do it to a dog or a cat, there's really no reason to do it to a sheep. And if you thought sheep were the only victims of wool farming, think again. Many, many wool farming operations consider native animals in the area, including coyotes in the United States and kangaroos in Australia, to be pests. So they kill them. Thousands of kangaroos and a lot of other local animals are killed every year by ranchers. And while there are certain laws governing the killing of kangaroos in Australia, as long as it's on their own private property, ranchers can do whatever they want to the animals without fear of consequences. In the United States, coyotes are vilified for preying upon the animals. So as a result, thousands of coyotes who reside in the same areas as the sheep are killed by ranchers and the federal government by shooting or by using traps, either leg hold traps or snare traps. And when traps are used, they don't just kill coyotes, they kill any animal in the area that happens to put their paw down in the wrong spot. So that's more cruelty for local wildlife and disruption of ecosystems, all for wool. And while there are humane ways of protecting sheep from local wildlife and giving the sheep the space they need, such as using predator-proof fencing, that costs a lot of money. And of course, the industry doesn't want to do that because they want a lot of money. And as if the cruelty and violence isn't enough, there's actually a pretty negative impact of wool farming environmentally. The hundreds of millions of sheep that are bred into existence for wool production require vast amounts of land and water, both to house and hydrate the sheep and to cultivate the massive amount of plant food required to feed them. And sheep raised for wool produce crazy amounts of excrement, which leaks into groundwater and local rivers and pollutes the environment, especially from the methane and carbon dioxide emissions. Some wool farming operations still practice dipping their sheep in a toxic solution of pesticides to ward off mites, lice, ticks, and other pests. And these pesticides are not only hazardous to the environment, but of course harmful to the sheep and can leave toxic residues that remain in the wool so, is wool worth it? Absolutely not. Your grandma may buy you a really cool, comfy wool Christmas sweater every year, and you may really like those wool socks you saw at the store, but seriously, don't buy it. You might as well be wearing fur. Lambs raised in the wool industry and the sheep that live to endure the misery of the wool industry, their suffering is not worth wool. There are so many other materials that you can buy sweaters and socks and blankets from that didn't come from an animal that suffered. Please say no to wool. Do not purchase anything made from the following materials. Angora, mohar, cashmere, shearling, chatouche, or anything labeled wool. Cruelty-free alternatives to wool include cotton, cotton flannel, polyester fleece, synthetic shearling, microfiber, acrylic yarn, rayon, linen, viscose, modal, soy silk, bamboo, hemp, and more. Tensile or lyocell is one of the newest cruelty-free wool substitutes. It's breathable, durable, and biodegradable. Polartec Wind Pro is made primarily from recycled plastic soda bottles, and it's a high-density fleece with four times the wind resistance of wool that also wicks away moisture. Check out companies like Vote Couture, who make stylish, designer, cruelty-free vegan coats that you would think are wool, but they're not. So now you know, wool is cruel, it's not worth it, sheep are amazing, and please share this video with your friends, family, and on social media. You can connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, all that fun stuff. Don't buy wool. Thank you.